America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, during last year, newspapers printed many stories of border violations. The world was nervous. Boundaries between countries were closely guarded, and each violation brought new diplomatic protests. It is the story of border violations engineered by international troublemakers that I bring to you now. My old friend, John Holbrook, will introduce the story. Thank you, K-7. Agent Z, one of K-7's former associates, was one of the few who knew the real story behind border violations. He knew that many of these acts were unintentional, but that others were deliberately planned by international crooks and spies who were making large fortunes selling information to the rearming nations. It was a trick to keep world tension high, and Z knew that the offenders must be captured. When he had gathered the information he needed to act, he called on his friend, Patricia Norwood. I'm going to ask you to help me, Pat. Now look at this newspaper. You'll find a story about border violations on the front page. Oh, yes, I've just been reading it. Good. Now I'll tell you the real facts. Pat, the majority of those so-called international incidents are a part of a deliberate plot. A plot, Z? You mean that? I've gathered as much information as I could, Pat. And now I'm going after the crooks. I want you to go with me. Well, how are they working? Well, one man, I'm not sure of his identity, has a private airplane hidden somewhere. He's painted the insignia of one country on the underside of the wing. So that it will be easily identified when he flies over the other. Yeah, that's right. Each night he flies across the border, drops low with propaganda so that he'll be seen, and then he returns to his own flying field. The smaller country enters a diplomatic protest. The result is world unrest, a threat of war. And I suppose this crook is selling information. Exactly. Now, he's got to be captured, Pat. I need your help again. Will you come with me? No, I will, Z. When do we start? Tonight. My plane is waiting at the airport, and there's no time to lose. Z laid his plans carefully. From diplomatic sources, he secured permission from both countries involved to fly over the border. The orders went out by radio. Permission is hereby granted to Agent Z for flights over the border. Night flights over such territory will be at his own risk, since border guards have orders to shoot down violators. Night flights at Z's own risk. Z immediately established headquarters at a small field near the disputed border. Two nights after his talk with Pat, the two had their equipment set up and were ready. They waited on the darkened airfield. Well, Pat, we're ready. Have you ever operated a radio direction finder? No, but I think I know how. Uh, you'll manage. Now, let's go over our plans again. As soon as the airplane that's violating the border is, is heard, I'll take off. When the pilot sees my plane in the air, he'll probably turn and head for his home field as fast as possible. I'll try to follow it. Well, I hope you're successful, Z. Be sure and fly high over the border. The guards might shoot you down. No, I won't take any unnecessary chances. Now, while I'm in the air, I'll keep in constant touch with you by radio. Yes. I know how to work the transmitter at this end. Now, your biggest job will be to keep the direction finder trained on me at all times. And that'll tell you which way I'm flying. South, southeast, southwest. And then if I should lose the other plane up there in the darkness, we'd at least know in which direction his field lies. And by computing the speed of your plane, you could tell approximately how far from here the field is. Oh, that's it, Pat. Knowing the direction and the approximate distance from this field, we should be able to locate it, even if he gets away from me tonight. Z, listen. Yep, he's up there, Pat. I'm going to take off. Remember what you have to do. If all goes well, I'll see you in an hour or two. Tune in your radio as soon as I'm in the air. I will. Be careful, Z. I'd better turn the radio on. Hello? Hello? 147R calling plane 291R. 147R calling plane 291R. Can you hear me, Z? Hello, Pat. 291R calling 147R. Radio working perfectly. Come in. I can hear you, Z. I've got the direction finder working. Keep a train on me, Pat. I'm gaining altitude. I'm over the other plane now. I don't think the other pilot has seen me. Yes. Yes, he has seen me, Pat. He's turning back. He's headed toward the border. I'm behind him and above him. Keep your direction finder on me. I have it on you, Z. You're headed directly south. Do you hear me? You're headed directly south. The plane that's been violating the border has increased its speed, Pat. There's no doubt that he's seen me. We've been spotted from the ground, too. The border is directly under us. The border guards are using anti-aircraft guns. 
There are puffs of white smoke as the shells explode around us. Zee, Zee, be careful. Go higher. We're over the border now. I don't believe either plane was hit. The border violator's still directly ahead of me. Are you watching the direction finder? Yes. You're still headed directly south. Z, Z, come in. Z, Z, can you hear me? 147R calling plane 291R. Come in, come in, I've lost you. Pat, I'm afraid I'm in trouble. My motor is missing. Wait, it's better again now. Watch direction finder. Keep talking, Z. My motor is missing badly, Pat. The other plane is gaining on me. I'm losing speed. Z, turn and come back. Come back. I've just discovered the trouble. My gasoline tank was hit as I flew over the border. The gasoline has leaked away. I've got to go down. Z, Z, keep talking. Nearly down, Pat. Nearly down. Dropping flares for a forced landing. There's a beat. Hello. Hello, Z. Z, can you hear me? Z, come in. 147R calling plane 291R. Come in. Z's radio was silent, his fate unknown. Pat waited until the following afternoon for some word from him. Then she wirelessed M's old friend, K-7. He advised her to notify the authorities of both countries and to charter a plane, cross the border, and make a close survey of the countryside from the air. Fly lower, pilot. I thought I saw something. Yes, miss. No, no, it's nothing, I guess. I don't understand why we haven't seen a plane on the ground. Oh, if only K-7 were here. Your friend Z must have landed safely. Well, I was thinking of that. If he'd crashed, we would have sighted the wreck. Or there would have been a report. How far behind the border are we now? About 55 miles, directly south. Well, Z couldn't have been that far. We'd better turn. Wait. Wait, do you see anything in that tall tree below us? Well, yes. Yes, it's a long piece of cloth. And it looks as if it was tied to the top of the tree. That's right, miss. Now, look down over our left wing. There's a second cloth streamer tied to that tree down there. Yes, yes, I see it. And that field beneath is smooth, large enough for a plane to take off. Yes, plenty big enough. And there's a barn, too. It might be a secret hangar. Those rags tied to the tops of the two trees would show the direction of the wind so that a plane could land. That yeah, might be a private field, miss. You want to go down? We're 55 miles from the border, just far enough. That may be the field the plane that violates the border takes off from each night. How far is the next airport, pilot? Uh, about five miles. We'll head for it at once. I'm going to land. And tonight I'm coming back here on foot and look this field over. That night, Pat made her way back to the field she had sighted from the air. Was it the one used by the international crooks? If so, it was ideally located. The countryside was almost complete wilderness. As she crept to the edge of the field under cover of darkness, she saw lights. Then an airplane motor was started. Two men were near the plane. They turned and went back into the barn that served as a hangar. Pat made up her mind quickly. She ran to the plane, climbed in, and concealed herself behind the pilot's seat. Shortly after, the two men returned. You'll have no trouble tonight, Nigel. Found out what happened to the pilot who followed me last night? Yes, it was Special Agent C. He reached the ground safely? Yes. Now he's in prison. Prison? How could that be? The civil authorities saw the flares which he dropped. They were waiting for him when he reached the ground. But they will let him go free as soon as they find out who he is. That has been arranged. I told you that I had friends. The authorities believe that he is one of us. They have been told that his credentials are forgeries. He'll be in prison for a long time. If he's not shot as a spy. That is good. The special agent is in prison as a spy. Uh, before he can get out, there'll be war. Now, we'll start. Get in. Tonight, I go with you. We'll fly over every city and drop leaflets. What is in them will make the people think. Get in. Remember, I am with you. Fly high over the border. Take no chances. I'm ready. Take off. Very well. Go up higher. You're too near the trees. It will take a minute. The tail seems heavy. It is the extra gasoline and because you are with me.
Pat held her breath as she crouched in the darkness behind the two crooks. She waited until she was sure the plane was over the border. Then, cautiously, she crawled to the space under the wing. The gasoline tanks were there. She turned a valve. It was a desperate chance. What is the trouble? The motor is missing. I don't know, they Doc. We have plenty of gasoline. Oh. Hang on. We've got to land. It will be hard. The plane is heavy tonight. It does There's an airfield below. As soon as we are on the ground, run. We must not be caught. I can see the ground. Perhaps it will be all right. The city is to our right. I have friends there. Hang on. We're going to hit. Huh? I jump. We've been seen. There are men coming. Stay in the plane. If either of you attempt to get out, I'll have to shoot. Who are you? What are you doing in this plane? It makes little difference who I am, gentlemen. Huh? Don't try to move. Nedoc, they have turned on the airport lights. Yeah? There are men running towards us. Jump to the ground. I'll take care of this girl. You do, I'll... Stay in your plane. Uh, Surrounded, men. Z! Z, is that you? Well, Pat! Say, how did you get there? Who are these men? Z, keep them covered. These are the border violators. And this one, Nadoc, is head of the ring. Nadoc? Well, I've heard about you from K-7. Pat, this man tried to have me put in prison. K-7 freed me. You've captured one of the world's most daring international crooks. Nadoc and Neiser were arrested. Under questioning, they revealed the names of the others in the plot. Z rounded them up and sent them to prison. Within a week, diplomatic tension had lessened. Once again, Z had served the cause of peace. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking. <laughs>